everyone. This is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio, and I have some information today for you about brush care. Let's talk about how to keep your brushes in great shape, um, how to restore them if they have gotten frayed or they looked really used, and you need to kind of bring them back to life. I have done a lot of research on this lately because I have frayed so many of these little detailed brushes that I felt like I'm gonna have to throw these away. I definitely don't want to throw away my brushes. I've spent four you know, or five dollars a piece on them and this is just a few of them. Um, I definitely did not want to just take them and chunk them in a trash can without at least trying some techniques on how to clean them. But first let's talk about what you need to do as you're painting. So during your painting process, I found a cool little tool that I wanna share with you for cleaning as you go. You guys know that I use a couple of cups of water and one water I use for kind of just really rinsing my, my brushes and then the other one I use, which has got cleaner water in it, um, for just kind of rinsing off any excess that might still be on there. But you know when you're washing your brushes how you'll get the acrylic paint up in the ferrule and then as you paint, as you paint, you feel like that just kind of accumulates in the ferrule. Well, I found these very cool little um, tools called paint pucks. There actually is a set of three. I chose the pink and I have one already in this cup here, but I thought I would show you how these work. So they have a suction cup on the bottom. And these will work in, in a glass jar, in a solo cup, which is, I have like the Walmart brand cup here. It's not even a solo cup. And I wasn't sure it would work in that, but it does work beautifully. So what you do is you, while I've got some water in here, I actually put mine in because I feel like it suction cups better with, there's, with the water in there. Um, but anyway, so I'm gonna put this little paint puck down in my water. I'm gonna use the back of one of my plastic paint brushes and I'm just gonna kind of push it down in there and I'm going to let it suction cup to the bottom. Now, let me show you kind of how that looks. Let me see if I can get some light down in this little action. There you go, you see him, he's all suction cup down in there, right? So then what you do is when you're painting and you're over here and you've got a lot of paint accumulated and on your brush, then when you go to rinse your brush and you rinse it, you're just gonna kind of drag it on the little nodules that are on the paint puck. And what that does is it helps remove any of that excess paint. So you're, while you're working, you're pretty much keeping your brushes as clean as possible. So I am loving these little paint pucks. Um, I think I paid $15 for three of them. They also have something that's a jar that includes the paint puck. And, and it's also got storage around the you know outside. Those were all sold out. They were about $25, $26, and I just didn't want to invest in that yet. I think that would be an awesome tool also. But I've just used my solo cups because you know I like to try to keep it budget conscious. And um, so that's what I'm doing now to clean my brushes while I'm painting. So what am I doing when I'm finished painting? Let's discuss that. I'm done with my painting session and my brushes have been used and they are sitting over here and they've just been sitting here the whole night. They may not have a lot of stuff accumulated on them, but they really do need to be cleaned after a painting session. So let's go discuss what you'll need to do, and I'm gonna take a few brushes with me, and what products you should use to take care of your brushes after you're done with your session for the day. So this is what I use when I'm done with my painting session for the day. It is the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver, and it's going to clean off all different types of paints, and it conditions while it cleans. So how does this work? Let's open it up, and it's just like a, like a balm. I'm gonna get a little warm water. I'm not gonna use super hot water, but I'm gonna get some warm water, and I'm gonna take my brushes and get them a little bit wet, and then I'm gonna take them in this directly into the balm, and I'm just gonna move them around and get lots of that on there. And then I take it to my hand, I know that sounds ridiculous, but anyway, that way I feel like I can really get it clean. And then I'm just gonna rinse off the excess. You can also, after you've cleaned it, 
You can also put a little bit of the Restore on your bristles and leave it on there overnight or until whenever you use your brushes again. I just lay them flat on a paper towel while they're setting up. But when you go to use your brush again the next day, you have shaped the bristles. And let's do a long bristle so you can kind of get an idea of what I mean. These little bristles can get very rough sometimes. So let's try it with this. This is an old brush that I was gonna throw out, but I actually used some of the tips that I'm gonna show you in a minute and I restored it back to a very sharp point. And now it is a brush that I can continue to use and I didn't have to replace it. So let's go ahead and condition this brush getting it wet or wipe it into our balm. Make sure it's all down through the bristles. Rinse that part off. And then I'm gonna go back and get a little bit more. The reason I rinse before I put more on it is I wanna make sure if there's any paint left in it that I'm getting that off before I put this on here and that it's gonna stay on here. So once I've got some more of the balm on there, I'm going to the restorer, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of shape my bristles into a little point, just like they were to begin with. And I'm gonna leave them to dry overnight with that in there. So what do you do if your paint brushes are super frayed and they just look like there is no bringing them back? This is for restoring frayed brushes. So let me move you to another area Well, I have done research and I've tried a bunch of different techniques and um, haven't really been successful like I'd want to be successful on some of the things that I've tried thus far, but I thought this might actually work. So what I have here is this just boiled. This is actually just a cup of water that I boiled in the microwave for about three and a half minutes. I also have egg white in this little bowl here. I just threw out the yolk, you know, and kept, kept the egg white. Now I wanna see if I can show you this little tiny, tiny tip. This has to stay pointed or it's very difficult to work with um, on this brush that's a 20 slash zero, but it's frayed enough that it's just about to the point where I might have to trash it. I could still use a little bit maybe, but I, I just don't feel like it's gonna be as good. These get very damaged. I know it's hard to see with my hand being the same color as the brush. Let me, let me see if I can get a paper towel here, I'm gonna hold it like this so maybe we can see, but it's extremely frayed. And this is trash to me if I can't get this fixed. I can't use it this way. So I have a bunch of different brushes here that are basically not quite as bad as this one, but pretty close to it. And I thought we would try this technique. Now this is how I put my brushes that are in good shape. I have this little thing that I found. Um, I'm gonna link you to that on Amazon. For those of you who are interested in maybe getting something like that, all you do is you take your brushes and you just stick them down in these little slots, wherever they fit. And what I do is I, I put my brushes in here based on the size and that's how I store them. But I'm actually gonna use that when I'm done to put my brushes back into. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to hold our paintbrush in this boiling water for three seconds. Then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put it into the egg white. Now, from what I understand, you might have to shape the bristles with your fingertips. And this one's of course tiny, so I'm really trying to do it carefully. And then I'm actually, I'm just gonna to try to dip it again, just to make sure I've got egg white on there enough to keep it in place. Egg white is very sticky, so it should hold these in place. And so the boiled water, what that's done is it's warmed it up and it's moved, it's kind of like relaxed these hairs to where when I put the egg white on it, it will stay in place. So I'm just gonna lay that down on this paper towel for a little bit. The recommendation is to maybe let them stay overnight. So I might have to come back with an update on how well this worked or if it worked at all. Boy, those are really frayed. All right, and then we're gonna go in here with our egg white. And this one is definitely gonna need to be shaped more. Now on this one, because it is in such bad shape, there, you know, it might be that after I've worked with it, if I can't get it to go to a point, 
Then I'm going to try to put it back in the boiled water. It's actually improving a lot. Um, back in the boiled water and then back in my egg. Let's do that again. So three seconds in here. I'm actually going a little longer than three seconds. And then back into our egg, uh, egg white. And shape it. See if we get anything. Now I'm gonna continue to do that until I feel like it's really gonna go into a point. Now it might be that this brush is just too far gone, but I'm not willing to give up on it yet. So I'm gonna put that there and let it dry and then later I'll come back to it and I might, after it's dried up, I might try this whole process again and see if it helps if I do it a second, third time. Okay, my water is good and hot now. So let's go in with this little brush, hold it over the paper towel so we can see it before. And let's try this, one, two, three. It doesn't have a lot of bristles to it. It's a 20 zero also. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one there. Now I've also heard that you can take aluminum foil, like tin foil, and just wrap it around the point and tight, you know, put it around and tighten it up and it will reshape your brush tip. I'm not going to all that trouble right now unless this doesn't work and then I might have to do it. This one still has the egg wash on it. So I'm gonna rinse this off because it's still very hard. Um, but I want you to see, if you can tell, these little tiny bristles, there's a little bit of fraying at the point. Well, this was completely frayed, like out. Like I thought this was a brush that was going in the trash for sure. Let me clean this off. Now, once I've taken off that hardened egg, I may have one or two little stray brush bristles that, you know, that still give me trouble. Um, but for the most part, that has worked very effectively for me. But I've also used this technique. You can take something that you have around the house, just something simple, like a little measuring cup for um, medicine, something like that. And you put a little bit of hair gel in it. Then you're gonna dip your brush tip into the hair gel and mix it around and then shape your brush. And then you're gonna rinse that out. And when you're done, you're gonna dip it into a little bit of fabric softener. So this is fabric softener. I'm just gonna smooth out my bristles, get them very straight. And then I'm going to put them back into a sharp little point and I'm gonna leave them to set with the fabric softener on there. And that is going to keep my bristles conditioned. It's going to reshape my brush and get it back to almost new. Now, with the paint puck as I, as I paint and the restorer as I'm done with a painting session, if I had been going ahead and cleaning properly after I'd used my brushes, they probably would have never gotten into a frayed condition to begin with. But since they did, I thought the egg wash was my best method for getting them brought back to life and the gel and fabric softener method has worked for me. I've tried some of the other ones that were suggested. I didn't feel like those were as effective. So that is why I'm telling you about these two. And I hope that these will help you guys so that you don't feel like you're throwing your brushes out after one or two paintings and you don't feel like you're wasting money. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you guys will subscribe, like, share, go join the group, and I will see you back very soon with some more videos for Paint by Numbers.